look, and they acknowledge that's the opening score. He's a very special talent, scored twice against London, and indeed three times an All-Star back in 1998-2001. He's still producing the goods. Damien Burke leads the side from right corner back, delivers it over towards Sean Armstrong. Salt Hill knocked the Carabao. With him is Neil Ewing. Gets it onto the right boot. Good effort. And tipped over the crossbar by Philip Green. It's Shawnee Armstrong's second point of the game. Johnny David. Willing to run a goal right, which might be the key to unlock the door. Still running. Getting inside Paris Kelly. He's good on the left foot. Gives it Paris Brehan. Kicks it over the bar. The best move by a mile. By the man from Sligo. Good work here by Johnny David. Played half forward last summer against Mayo, but now back in his best position of left half back. Here's Davy again. Can he score from there? First it was a cornerback. Now it's a left halfback. And it's the defensive boys that are showing the forwards how to score. <laughs> David Kelly. Niall Coyne. Staying with them, coming through the middle. There's a chance, genuine chance, and a good save. Wonderful opportunity for Kenneth Sweeney, bearing down on Adrian Faherty, and the keeper did really well. Knocked away and gathered by Neil Ewing. Eamon O'Hara seeking, but not being delivered. There's a push there. The referee, Derek Fay, spotted it. Nile Point, the offending player. He looks at the umpires, but don't think there are any uh, protests coming from any of his colleagues dressed in maroon and white. And the ball is tapped over the bar, and the sides are level for the first time after 44 and a half minutes of action in Sligo. It's 18 minutes since Goldwyn scored. And remember, they're the Division 1 side against Division 4. Sligo playing with a lot more confidence than what we saw in the first half. Ross Donovan being chased by Sean Armstrong. The foul is on the goal, my man. For the second time, he's hitting the deck. Neil Ewing could be in trouble here. He's already on a yellow card. The referee is noticing his name, and if he produces a yellow card, it'll be the second yellow. It's a second yellow, and I'm afraid the red is on its way. This is a young man who is making his championship debut here, and this will be a serious blow to Sligo's prospects. They are now down to 14 players. <laughs> Michael Meehan sends it in, but Niall Coleman couldn't control it. Jonathan David lays it off, and Sligo now will have to play most of this second half from the 47th minute when Neil Ewing was sent off. And there's more trouble over that far sideline. And perhaps the referee will take action here because Gary O'Donnell could be in trouble. There's a consultation with the linesman. Now, will Derek Fahey send him off? He has. It's 14 against 14. Straight red for Gary O'Donnell. Plays his cup football with St. Coleman's Gort. Let's see what happened here. There was a leaning down there. Oh, there's the punch. And the linesman and the referee are correct. Good work by Eamon O'Hara. Has to let it go. Picked up here by Porrick Joyce. Four Sligo players converge. Johnny Davy tries to get the hand in. Gets it first, Michael Meehan. Gets away from Noel Maguire and he puts it over the bar. Good score by Michael Meehan. His first from play. His second overall. It all started when Sligo lost control. Porrick Joyce picked it up, gave it far as Meehan, onto the left boot. White flag blowing in the breeze. Porrick Joyce. 
Ah, oh, great stuff. First to the ball, you cannot beat it. This is good play. There's a chance here for Stephen Cohn. Little jink. Beautiful football. Stephen Cohn. Can Galway make maximum use of this particular move? Joe Bergen giving in far as Niall Coleman. Bergen going for the return. Here comes the shot. The kick is quality. Is that the match winner? Joe Bergen's only point in this championship semi-final. Is it enough to get Galway to the Connacht final against Mayo in Pierce Stadium? Mark Brehney's just uh, been shown a yellow card. Sligo have to get possession here. A race for Jonathan Davy ahead of Forrick Joyce. Has to go down on the ball and gather cleanly. Paul Conroy. Forrick Joyce wins the possession. Lobs it in. Unmarked Sean Armstrong. This to wrap it up. Pot about fisting it over the bar. The empty net is there. It's Galway in the Connacht final. A goal and three points for Sean Armstrong. That seals victory deep into injury time. Sligo was sucked out of position. He thought about fishing it over the bar, then decided to get around the keeper and tucked it neatly into the empty net. It's Galway against Mayo in the Connacht final of 2009. We firmly believe we had a great chance here today. You know, I know the pundits and writing us often. That's, that's fine by us, you know, but I mean, the way the championship has gone, you don't know what kind of performance is going to come from any given team, but we knew we had the work done for the last six months. The lads have worked seriously, seriously hard. I mean, there's never been a quibble out of them. And um, I'm just proud of the effort they put in today. Just a bit very sad that they didn't get over the line. After a good start, we, we let Sligo come back into it and they dominated the last 10 minutes before half time. They came out after the break as well and, you know, they, they gave us bags of it. And um, those stages there in the game, it seems to be slipping away from us. Um, we, 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 we tagged back a couple of points, they made it level again and it was anyone's game really and we were just lucky at the end that we finished uh, small but stronger. Kevin, they did finish stronger but did Sligo leave it behind them? Uh, I'd say they'd be thinking they did tonight. I, I was just saying earlier, uh, Seamus thought it was a draw and I'd, a draw would have been more fitting and I'd agree with that, that that would have been the better result. Galway got away with a very average performance uh, to reach this Connacht final. I think if Sligo had a bit more guile a little bit uh, more know-how, they would have slipped because Galway just had a bad day. They, they, did, they got a great start and then drifted away completely and then got a real late wake-up call, knew they were in a battle and uh, Porrick Joyce probably made the difference coming down the last five minutes or so. But um, no, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't a great display by Galway. An average, an average enough match, a good contest, exciting contest in that the gap was narrow enough for most of the second half. But in an overall sense, I think Galway will feel very lucky tonight. Seamus, were you disappointed with the Galway performance? Oh, I was very disappointed, yeah. Um, what did you I expect thought, from them? I thought, well, I thought after last year, uh, the, the match against Kerry uh, was one of the best matches I saw for uh, last year, uh, in the whole year. And um, Michael Meehan's display was something to behold. But uh, I thought they'd progress from that and um, they have a long way to go. Dara, could we suggest though that sometimes it takes the team a while to get into the Championship? Uh, that could be the case, but don't forget, they, Galway already had an outing. This was Sligo's first outing, and if anything, in the second half, they showed the form. You'd expect Galway being favourites and being you know, the stronger team in, in, in the province to show a kind of a ruthless streak. And mm -hmm. just It's up to them to control the tempo of the game. When it comes to playing teams like Sligo, they should be really putting the foot down. They went eight points to two ahead after 28 minutes. They didn't score from, from play. You know, for about a half an hour, they went 22 minutes in, t in total without scoring that time. And, you know, you'd expect them to be more ruthless and not as nice as they are. They're too nice. All right, Kevin, you've been looking at the Galway attitude in the game. Yeah, well, they didn't start off too nice, I can assure you that, because that's what gave them the great start. They were very keen in the tackle, very crispy. Their attitude was spot on in the opening 10 minutes. When they established a five, to five point to one point lead, uh, and you'd think, you'd think they were going to cruise home. And you see, that, like they're hunting in packs, the Galway defenders. It's really crisp tackling, as I said. A lot of heat on the ball, and it's good turnover ball, putting Galway into a good position. And really, this opening was outstanding. It would have been everything that Liam Salmon was looking for. Uh, the wonder and the pity from a Galway perspective is they couldn't keep it going. You see it here, ball after ball, Sligo bringing it in, Galway very 
very strong, but there was a great attitude at that stage. Everybody was mad for work, everybody was hungry and chasing it. Here's another, brings it into the middle, that just gobbled up, gone away by Jeremy the Blake again. And this was going on for, as I said, the opening 10, 15 minutes, and you're thinking, nah, game up here. And this is the second half, and they've, they've put off the pedal. Look at the space that's inside, lovely in ball, you know, really going to test them. And here's John Kelly, who tormented them. Three defenders here, just watch what happens here. One runs away, one puts a token paw on him, and he just uh, pops it over the bar. Now that's, uh, you know, that's just poor defending. They we, were we, we three on two there. We call it, they, 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 you always feel you have a chance, even when they're on top, as they were that time. As you say, they, they don't ram it home ever. You always feel you're still in the game. Is this because they're them. nice? As you, yeah. That's a damning praise. It's a horrible word to yeah, use. Yeah, they're, they're, they're just too nice. I've, heard it, I've yeah. heard it on my own county yeah. so many times as well, and maybe, maybe there's a grain of truth in it. What do you think, Liam Salmon will be thrilled to hear this because they won't be that nice the next day. <laughs> the um, green and red will bring out the, the, the madness out of them. Well, the green and red will definitely bring out the best of them. There's <laughs> okay. no doubt about that. Darry, you, you were looking at their kickouts. Yeah, it, it's been a problem area for quite a while and Liam Salmon will be very disappointed with his midfield. Like, if I'm both their own kickouts and the Sligo kickout, they're just, I mean, there's a handoff here and he's just holding. I mean, Adrian Faherty is kicking the ball out here and when a goalie has limited options, he's trying to put it out of the wings, out over the sideline. These are two Galway kickouts coming up, Adrian Faherty kicking it out again. And, you know, just because Eugene Mullen goes up and they don't have that physical presence. And Kevin Walsh would have known this from his time there. They haven't had a decent midfielder since Kevin Walsh played it's himself. Their number one problem. Eamon O'Hara, yeah. wing yeah. a Sligo wing forward. He, sh he shouldn't feel he'd, he'd be able to jump independently yeah. like that. He was just left goal, left through. Again, it's coming back to they're just too nice. They don't do. I'm not saying they should be more cynical, but they should be a little bit clever, especially on their own kickouts. They'd be very disappointed with their own kickouts today. Is that fair criticism, Seamus? Very fair, yeah. Uh, I thought our midfield were okay for 10 or 15 minutes and they disappeared. Um, we, we passed the ball very erratically and uh, Sligo were much sharper for, after the first 20 minutes. Uh, th there was about at least six, I think, interceptions by Sligo backs yeah. and sent, uh, Sligo players all over the pitch uh, where Galway were standing still. All right, Kevin, two red cards, there's no big dispute about them subsequently? Not particularly, no. Um, Should there, there have been there's... another? Well, this is, this is what people are wondering, and uh, it's, this is the first one where Eamon O'Hara gets involved on the ground with uh, Joe Bergen, I think it is. Uh, we're just establishing that he does get a yellow card here in the first instance, because we're going to play it on further now to see uh, what happens in the second incident. Th th this is absolute correct, yeah. no, no question here. Now, we had a long look at this, and uh, Michael Meehan is putting a lot of pressure on the ball, but uh, two things to watch out for. He certainly doesn't drive the elbow into his face. And when you see Michael Meehan go to the floor, and we've been hard on fellas diving, but look at Michael Meehan in fairness, is up immediately. Now this is, I won't, I, I won't say this is clever, because he has no, Barry has no, well, he has watch no Meehan interest here again. He's acting here. as peacemaker, because he knows Absolutely, Eamon O'Hara hasn't language. elbowed him yeah, deliberately. Yeah, yeah know, but so. Barry Cullinan has no business coming in. He's, he's gone into something that he knows nothing about, and at that stage Meehan has moved on. So good, play, good, good refereeing, uh, gave the benefit of the doubt to Eamon O'Hara. Now he was on the edge with it. But he got away with I it. You have to credit Michael Meehan's reaction. Absolutely, 100%. Yeah. All right. Dara, who are the contenders for Man of the Match? Well, I suppose on the Sligo side, we had one striking contender. David Kelly was very, very lively all day. Gave a lot of bother to, to Niall Kine. He was a handful. He got four second half points, one beaut from, from, from play. On the Galway side, Sean Armstrong started very well and finished very well. Uh, kicked one three from play. And, of course, we had, we had Garrett Bradshaw as well. Even when things were going against Galway, he was featuring very strongly as well. And who gets it, Kevin? Yeah, that's, in the end we went for Gareth Bradshaw of Galway. Uh, we thought that in the overall sense his contribution was, uh, w was the factor that uh, got Galway over it. He's a very positive sort of player. He was al he's always doing positive things. He attacks very well, he defends very well, he got a smashing point uh, in the first half. I like, I like this guy, I think he's a really good footballer. Handles the ball well, protects it well, adds a lot of football in him, as you'd expect from a Galway halfback. Well able to play, well able to defend too, does and sometimes we get we get blinded by attacking wing back, but he, yeah. he can play a bit of defensive work too. And I thought he was a credit to his team today. And he's not nice then. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's, <laughs> well, let's hear from Gareth Bradshaw. He's talking to Joanne. Gareth, well done on being the GAA Football Championship Man of the Match. You're through to a Connacht final, but was there much celebrating going on in that dressing room? Cheers, Joanne. Um, no, there's a lot of work to be done, I suppose. I suppose we knew coming down here in Sligo it was going to be a tricky encounter with Kevin over them and whatnot. And five minutes, ten minutes towards the end there, I think we'd have taken a draw. But uh, I suppose we got two crucial scores there at the end and just finished, finished them off. 